In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can connect up to 992 servers to an Arduino by using these 16-channel PWM drivers, which are controlled over ITC. Each one of these boards can drive up to 16 servers or PWM outputs, and you can chain up to 62 of them together. This means that you could drive up to 992 servers, all controlled by just two pins on a single Arduino. There are two sets of control input pins, one on each side of the board. Each board also has two power terminals at the top to provide a dedicated 5 to 6 volt power supply to the outputs, and then the 16 outputs along the bottom. What's also nice about these boards is that they're already set up to accommodate the 3 pin servo plugs, so you can plug all your servos directly into the board, instead of needing additional wiring. You can use either set of control inputs to connect your board to your Arduino, but they're more useful if you're going to be chaining them together. On the top right of each board is a set of bridgeable address jumpers, which allow you to bridge different combinations to create a unique address for up to 64 different boards. You can also use these boards to control LEDs, so you can control up to 992 LEDs individually and control their brightness as well. To chain two boards together, we'll need to add some pins to the right side of the board to plug the next board into it. We'll then need to bridge the first terminals on the right to change the address on the second board, so that our Arduino can differentiate between the two. Looking at the back of the board, the board accepts two supply voltages, one between 3 and 5 volts for the logic or onboard chip, and the second up to 6 volts, which is to supply the output pins. There's also a note to say that the terminals at the top have reverse polarity protection, while the input on the side through the control pins does not. The power supplied through the terminals is fed to the V-plus control pin, meaning that you don't need to connect every board in the chain through the terminals, unless you're drawing a lot of currents on each. Now that we've added the second set of control pins and changed the address on the second board, we'll need to create a ribbon cable connector to join the two boards together. You only need to connect four pins to Arduino in between each board. The ground, the two ITC pins and the logic supply voltage, VCC. The other two pins, OE and V+, are used to enable or disable the boards and to supply voltage to the output pins. I've created a ribbon cable to connect all six pins between the boards so that the output voltage is fed to the second board and so that I can use the enable pin in future if needed. When connecting your PWM drivers to Arduino, make sure that you use the correct ITC pins. This is through analog pins 3 and 4 on old Arduino Unos, through digital pins 20 and 21 on old Megas, and through the dedicated SDA and SEL pins on later models. Remember that VCC is only to supply the logic circuits on the drivers, not the outputs. To drive the outputs, it's recommended that you use a dedicated power supply through the terminals. Now go ahead and plug your servos into the output pins on your boards. Make sure that the plugs are plugged in the correct way around, with the brown wire being ground and the orange wire being the PWM signal. Now let's have a look at the code and how to control each servo. We're going to be using the Adafruit PWM servo driver library. 
You can install this library easily from the Arduino IDE by going to Sketch, Include Libraries, Manage Libraries, and then searching for Adafruit PWM and clicking Install. Once the library is installed, we can write a simple program to move each of the six servos on each board individually. We start by importing the Adafruit library. We then create a new object for each of the connected boards, remembering to change the address to suit the address jumpers we've already used. We then set our minimum and maximum travel limits for our servos. This is quite important so that you're not over-traveling your servos, which may cause them to burn out or strip the gears. We also need to set the server operating frequency. Most analog servos run at 50 Hz. In the setup function, we start each board, then set the oscillator frequency and then the servo frequency. In the loop function, we've got a loop which cycles through the six servo numbers, numbered from 0 to 5 as per the board output numbers. We then have a loop which drives the current servos, one from each board, from their minimum position to the maximum position, with a 1 millisecond delay between movements. This translates to a relatively slow server movement. We then wait 100 milliseconds and move the same two servos from their maximum position back to their minimum position at the same speed. Once all six servos have been moved on each board, we wait 500 milliseconds and then start again moving the first two servos and the loop continues. Let's upload the sketch and have a look at the servos moving. Being able to control servos like this enables you to build more complex projects by freeing up your Arduino's I.O. and reducing the processing load because these servo drivers produce their own PWM signal. These are great for building robot arms, walking robots and projects involving a lot of LEDs such as cubes, clocks and simple games. Let me know in the comments section what you plan on using these drivers for. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.